Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, I'm going to go over the features that I think will be in iOS 11. Now we have just about, what, 24 hours, maybe a little bit more, give or take, uh, until WWDC 2017, at which iOS 11 is supposed to be unveiled. So let's go over who's not getting iOS 11. Uh, iPad 4, iPad mini 2, iPhone 5, they're all going to miss out on iOS 11 compatibility, and that is because uh, they are going to cut out any device that is not on a 64-bit architecture. So any 32-bit, not going to work. This also means that there are going to be a ton of apps that don't have support for iOS 11. They're going to be basically removed from the App Store or at least not able to run uh, on the newer phones. So that is kind of a, a bummer, but also developers got to get your act together, start updating your apps. So here's what I think is going to be new. I agree with a lot of what Macworld says here. Um, but one thing that they didn't put at the top of their list, which I think should be there, I think tomorrow we're going to see a design language change with the app icons and with just little tweaks here and there. I mean, I think that it's not going to be a huge design overhaul. I think it's going to keep, you know, the flat aspect of the design language. But I think there's going to be, you know, app icon updates across the board uh, and just design changes. So it's not going to be a, as big of a change from what iOS 6 to iOS 7 but it's gonna be bigger than like iOS 7 to where we're at now because there's been you know a few font changes and stuff. I think it's gonna be a bigger change than that. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Also Siri updates, um, this is a big one that uh, is definitely, definitely gonna happen because um, the Siri speaker and everything that's supposed to be coming out later this year and Siri really needs some help uh, just because of it's not very useful. So here's one I think everyone would like, and that is a dark mode. So if iOS 11 actually shipped with a dark mode feature uh, that was able to be enabled whenever you want throughout the entire OS, that would be freaking awesome. I think everyone would like it. I mean, everyone hates texting a friend at you know midnight in a dark room and that bright white screen just glaring in your eyes. It just fucking hurts. It's terrible. So dark mode would be awesome. And it's probably not even that hard to implement. Um, so you guys can watch my other video where I show off uh, there is a, kind of a hidden dark mode within one app. It's kind of lame, but it's cool to show that I'm pretty sure this is going to come with iOS 11. So anyways, be sure to check that video out once it's posted. Here's a big one that I think everyone has wanted since the inception of FaceTime, and that is multiple users that can join in a FaceTime call. That would be freaking epic. I'm tired of having to use Skype and other you know, third-party apps to do multiple users on one call at once. FaceTime only allows two people, if you didn't know which is super lame and super stuck in like 2010 era of technology. So multi-user FaceTime calls would be freaking awesome. Next up, multiple user accounts. I don't necessarily agree with this one, um, but it would be pretty cool. I guess if you have kids and shit and you don't want uh, them to be able to, you know, go into your phone and screw up your phone's apps and data and call people, uh, you could just have a guest mode for your phone and just tell your kids to go play on that and have a couple games loaded. Personally, I wouldn't use it. But it would be cool to have nonetheless. A new Snapchat-like video app. So this I've heard actually from a few different sources, which would be kind of cool if Apple had their own um, social media app. Not sure how relevant this is actually going to be and how realistic it's going to be, but we'll find out tomorrow. But it would be cool if they did uh, make a really, really nice social media app, but they'd have to nail it because Snapchat's huge. Facebook's pretty big, although it is declining. Twitter's pretty much at its peak and it's declining. So having a new social media presence uh, out there, especially from Apple, would be huge and could take over a lot of the apps that are out there right now, like Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat. In-camera augmented reality, not so sure about that, but it probably will happen just because AR is going to be pretty big on the next iPhone 8, I believe, because it's gonna have a couple new cameras on it, on the front and the back. So uh, this is definitely something to look for. And what would a new iOS release be without new emojis? But besides the new emojis that are definitely going to be released, I mean, everyone knows there's going to be new emojis, uh, but new messaging features, that would be pretty cool. So this is kind of weird. It's saying, for example, two friends could be able to see all text messages, emails, and social network interactions between each other in a single window. It'd be kind of weird, but it would be, I guess, kind of cool. So uh, this person would like to see read receipts in group iMessages, which I actually think would be cool. I don't know how they'd implement that, but it would be cool to have nonetheless because I'm in a lot of group chats and I'm sure you guys are too. And you know how it is if you, if someone's like got their phone off or something, you're not sure if they've read it. But that's where this next feature comes into play here. Uh, Apple has filed a patent that could be summarized as a system that detects where your friends are and whether they're available and their operating status of their iPhone, such as airplane mode or silent. 
presents that information in the contacts app. It would be cool as hell to have, um, kind of creepy. Uh, hopefully there's a way to turn it off if you didn't want people to see any of that. But it would be awesome to know, you know, if someone's phone's off, if I'm texting them or if they're in airplane mode, maybe I shouldn't mess with them, you know, uh, stuff like that. Like I've got my phone right now in airplane mode so that people don't, if someone texts me right now, it's not gonna buzz and shake the table and screw up this video. So um, that's definitely a cool thing. Uh, if they could implement that, maybe on like the actual chat pages too, not just the contacts app. This is kind of a schematic on how it could work, I guess. Uh, it's kind of complicated here. And it also makes me wonder about how much, you know, data would be used, but I guess it would just be a couple packets sent over the internet just to show um, what the uh, status uh, is of the phone. And it wouldn't have to constantly update it either. Because in my theory, it would just be whenever a change is made. So if you go from airplane mode to not airplane mode, it would send the packet. It wouldn't have to constantly update and check. So that would be kind of cool. Improved maps. Uh, there was a report the other day about drones being used to capture more map information. Uh, and Apple hiring other people to go out and map stuff. So that would be kind of cool. Uh, improve indoor mapping for all those burglars and stuff that want to steal a bunch of shit from someone's house. They can, you know, map their entire floor plan out. <laughs> I don't know what the use of indoor mapping is besides like a shopping mall or something. So these next features aren't really anything that I'm really excited about, but updated TV and music apps, handoff for media, iPad specific features. Don't care about the iPad at all. And then Apple to kill off nearly 200,000 apps that don't support 64-bit processors. That is uh, pretty much going to happen. Um, so yeah, finger detecting dynamic keyboard. Uh, I know they had a patent for that, but uh, it's not something I'm super uh, hyped about just because it's iPad stuff. So here's some of their features wish list. I'm just going to throw this into the video just because you guys might want some of it. But slide to unlock. Eh. Control center. I don't even know what they're talking about here, but I can tell you off the bat. I wish it was just one page. I hate swiping between the two. It's still a pain in the ass, um, but I wish there were also more features like you could hard press or what is it? 3D touch on one of these buttons and you know get some extra features. Cosmetic changes, yes, we know. Per app passcode and touch ID lock would be freaking cool to have. Something that definitely is needed in my opinion, especially if they're doing guest mode, they'd probably uh, put in uh, some biometric at least maybe a passcode or biometric touch ID locks on apps and stuff. That would be great. I still think people should be able to password protect certain photo albums on their phones. You know what I'm talking about? Ability to change video resolution in app, of course. That would be freaking awesome. We've been asking for that since forever. Uh, view favorites and contacts app, yes. So there are some concepts here. Uh, not anything that I am really concerned about because no one really knows uh, what it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to wait for public beta, of course. That's pretty much all we know about iOS 11 right now. There's not a ton of leaks or anything on it right now, uh, but we will find out all of this tomorrow at WWDC. So stay tuned, follow me on Twitter, and I'll try to keep you guys up to date with everything. If this video helped you out in any way, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.